Hi. So today I wanted to read this article written by Tony. I'm not going to try and read the last name because I will probably butcher it. It's one of the very few times I've written an article from a journalist in New York City where I did not feel that immediate desire to puke or take a shower afterwards. So good on you, Tony. You can follow her on Twitter here. I got the URL. And this is the article. So the article is about how a University of, Ohio, of Idaho students can earn academic credit for contributing to and writing uh, feminist blog posts. Uh, they say that we cannot pretend to be unbiased, the blog's mission statement declares, so they're, they're, they're biased. And let's just read what some of these articles are about. So students Chloe, for instance, wrote the most recent post for the blog, which argued in favor of banning the Victoria's Secret Pink tour bus, which sells athletic and leisure clothes from vending on campus. Victoria's Secret Pink bus should not be allowed on campus because of their lack of inclusion, she suggested. From their styles, prices, and advertising, Victoria's Secret markets for a very specific clientele. She went on to question how a company catering to rich, pretty, white women helps further society's acceptance and support of positive body image. And we've got other, other blog posts here about being single on Valentine's Day. So this, this, this blog post on being single on Valentine's Day uh, is something that you can earn college credit for, yes. Write about your experience being single on Valentine's Day, and that will actually get you academic credit at a real university. Now, we could have a legitimate discussion on whether or not certain companies should be allowed to advertise on campus or whether or not you, uh, whether or not you agree with them, and fair enough. And we could also have a discussion on the opinion on how Victoria's Secret operates as a company. And fair enough. You can be an activist. You can have your opinion. You can write for whatever blog you want. I am not against freedom of speech. I am not against freedom of expression. But there are a couple of reasons that I'm surprised that this is what you can earn college credit for at a higher learning institution. The first is that it's very ideologically driven. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to learn this ideology. You, you could be lectured to for half an hour to an hour, and you now have the framework within which you need to classify everything in the world through your ideology. So it goes something like this. Find any subjective or objective standard of quality, competence, or beauty. Attack that objective standard or subjective standard of quality, competence, and beauty as something that is oppressive because that there are many interpretations of anything. How dare you say that this is what is beautiful or this is what is competent? Then combine that with identity, group identity, and talk about how your group identity has less power than the group identity that you perceive as having more power and use that as fuel to create conflict between groups and identities based on power and also based on the attack on a hierarchy of competence, quality, or beauty. It's not even about whether I agree or disagree with a point or whether or not it's worth a discussion as to whether or not it provides value that Victoria's Secret can advertise on campus. It's that the ideology behind the article itself is boring, tried, old, and it just, it reeks of unoriginal thinking. It reeks of someone looking at an ideology and thinking, how can I apply this to everything in the world? You know, we can have a discussion over whether there should be other lingerie companies that that uh, that market to people who do, who are not, you know, picture perfect models that have had, you know, five hours of Photoshop put into every single advertisement. And all right, that's fair enough. But we know what's happening here. This is essentially just take ideology, spray and pray, and attack everything based on that ideology. And, you know, we, we call that the whole social justice warrior thing. And in 2018, it's really getting kind of boring. Rewarding people for how well they're able to box the world within the confines and framework of a specific ideology is not something that requires a high level of critical thinking, nor is it something that, in my opinion, is going to help someone be productive, become gainfully employed, or start a business. It's not something that I would ever expect to see at a higher learning institution. And the thing here about this type of, of, of uh, article as well is it's also some, in some sense a form of activism that you may really agree with and support or vehemently disagree with and not want to support. But the issue with it being done for credit at a university is that it doesn't matter if you support it or not, you're probably funding it because universities in the United States are heavily federally funded, as are the grants, as are the loans, in addition to all the money that colleges get for a number of other things. So 
if you're reading this and you think, wow, I don't, you know, th there's an article on being single on Valentine's Day. I really don't think this is the type of thing that people should be getting college credit for. Well, they are. And you're probably funding it. And this is where the, the problem sets in. And this is where the debate, or at least the, the, the temperature of the debate gets turned up a lot. And it becomes more and more divisive and more and more of a hot button issue because you're being forced to fund something that is just, in many ways, just not really something that belongs in a in a uh, higher learning institution. You know, this is this is not the type of thing that, in my opinion, is going to help you get a job that is going to solve problems in the world that people are willing to pay for. Unless I, I get maybe I could be wrong. You know, it's going to help you start a YouTube channel with a Patreon talking about taking down the patriarchy and all that, but. <sighs> Maybe they are adopting. Maybe that's a job these days. You could you could kind of turn down the temperature on that debate by not forcing people to fund these types of things. And I got a lot of flack for doing this video on a, a free college is a lie where I was talking about my opposition to college being free, which is not free, meaning funded by taxpayers at the expense of that money going elsewhere. And a lot of people took that as me being anti-education. And that's a point of contention for me since I am pro-education. I believe that everybody that knows something that, that, that is genuinely beneficial to society has a responsibility to share that information for the betterment of society, which is why I do all the work I do here. And I'd love to see more people do this type of thing where if they have knowledge that they think is beneficial to society, find a way to make it freely available to as many people as you can. I think education is great. The problem I have with taxpayer funding of education is that it's compulsory, and anytime you, you put compulsory funding into something like this, you want, you know, it, once you take out that market-facing aspect of it where there is no direct clamoring for value in exchange for money spent, you get stuff like college credit for writing feminist blog posts, protesting Victoria's Secret and talking about Valentine's Day. And th th this is the problem. You know, we are at a point where college costs a ridiculous amount of money as is, and there is a lot about modern college that is not good. It's very easy nowadays to go to college, to spend four years of your life there, just notwithstanding the, the money you go in debt, just the time that you spend there, the opportunity cost, and come out of it being less hireable than you were going into it. And that's a serious problem. And by giving more money to that institution where they are less market-facing, where they're less directly liable to their students to provide them value, I don't think that fixes anything. And I think stuff like this is worth pointing out. They offer workshops about how masculinity is linked to violence. They, uh, let's see, they recruited a student to become a body revolution intern, awarding the student with an academic credit to facilitate workshops that overthrow and replace established societal norms about body image. A AKA body positivity. So your federal funding is going to universities that are hosting workshops on and trying to not just even ho talk about it, but overthrow and replace established societal norms. I mean, that, that's activism in a sense, and, you, you're, and you're forced to fund it. She's also got a host of other great articles on universities that offer free room and board and will almost to some degree even pay you to advance social justice and diversity. Uh, the Inclusive Language Campaign was launched in 2015 with taxpayer funds. Um, yeah, just, just, just a, a bunch of good, interesting stuff to read if you're interested in where your federal tax dollars are going when it comes to university, and if you're debating whether or not you, could, you should spend that four years at university or doing anything else to learn. So I'm very happy for people like Tony that put in the work and effort to um, shed a light, shed light on this type of stuff. So do let me know what you think in the comments below. Do I have a point? Am I full of it? If so, why? And uh, as always, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.